Okay, uh, I'm wrapping up section 4.3, focusing in on cycles of matter. And so today I'm going to talk about two cycles, the nitrogen cycle and the phosphor cycle, and explain why they're important and which processes are involved there. And then I'm going to finish the chapter talking about nutrient limitation. So the nitrogen cycle is actually a very important cycle because nitrogen is needed to make amino acids. And if you remember what amino acids make up, you know, if you get a bunch of amino acids linked together, what have you created? you've created a protein. Not only that, nitrogen is found in DNA as well as RNA, so nucleic acids. So nitrogen is a pretty essential element for life. And um, most of the nitrogen that's found in on Earth, I should say, is in the atmosphere as gas. It makes up about 78% of the air we breathe. However, it's, it's useless in this form for us. We can't breathe in this nitrogen and use it to make proteins or DNA. We, we can't use N2 gas. We actually have to use a, a different form of nitrogen. So we actually have organisms in the soil as well as in the water that fixate nitrogen. They do this process called nitrogen fixation where they convert nitrogen gas into ammonia and then it gets converted into a few different forms or taken up by a plant and then we eat the plants and that's a form that, of nitrogen that we can use. But anyways, we have nitrogen fixation. So you can see that these arrows are being brought down it's being moved from atmosphere to, in this case, geosphere slash biosphere, atmosphere, in this case, hydrosphere, um, biosphere. And now nitrogen can be dissolved in the ocean. But I'm going to focus on the soil first. So anyways, um, we have nitrogen fixation. That form of nitrogen gets converted into different forms like ammonia, which is this NH3, and we have a bunch of nitrates over here. And then we have um, plants that can use these forms of soil nitrogen. Um, they absorb it through their roots and they use it and then um, these animals can eat it and we might eat those animals and now we can build proteins and um, nucleic acids. Okay, so we do have a biological component. Now there are some organisms that take these forms of nitrogen and release it back as nitrogen gas or N2. So that process is called denitrification. So these bacteria obtain energy by converting nitrates into nitrogen gas um, through denitrification. Okay. All right, so that's pretty much the blue arrows. Now, moving on to the physical slash chemical. So lightning can fix a small amount of nitrogen in a process called atmospheric nitrogen fix uh, fixation. So when lightning strikes, well, sometimes nitrogen gas gets converted into these nitrates. And so that's what they're trying to emphasize with these red arrows right there. And then finally, we have the human component where, um, you know, well, we'll just start with humans. Um, our involvement is obviously has skyrocketed because nitrogen is used as fertilizer. Okay, so we use this process around the world. We've been able to fix more nitrogen than all natural processes combined. Um, but they, I, it shows that it's being run off in rivers and lakes into the ocean where it's dissolved. Um, and some of it does get denitrified, uh, but yeah. So that's the human impact of the nitrogen cycle. Phosphorus cycle is essential to life uh, because it's found in nucleic acids. So unlike carbon, oxygen, and nitrogen, phosphorus does not cycle through the atmosphere. You can see that it's, it's not in the air at all. Okay, it's in the ground. Um, so one reservoir of inorganic phosphorus is found in the geosphere in the form of phosphate rock, right here, as well as soil minerals. Another reservoir is located in hydrospheres, down here. Okay, um, basically dissolved phosphate and phosphate sediments in freshwater and marine um, environments. So this is the phosphorus cycle. So phosphorus can be mined turned into fertilizer, maybe applied to crops, it may wash into rivers and streams as runoff. So that's kind of a human process of that. Um, with animals, phosphorus is taken up by primary producers, reused by consumers, released by excretion and decomposing matter. And then in geologic, geologic activity, phosphates can be washed from the rock into the ocean right here. And then we have geological activity that turns um, marine sediments into rock, which might trap some um, phosphate, and then we have phosphate rock. So there's the phosphorus cycle. All right, the last thing I want to talk about is nutrient limitation. Now, if 
Oh, this is a typo. Take off the S. If ample sunlight, okay, as well as water are available, then the primary productivity of an ecosystem can be limited by the availability of nutrients. And we call this a limiting nutrient. So that means that if an essential nutrient is in short supply, then that primary productivity is limited. So all of these nutrient cycles work together like gears or cogs, wheel, wheel cogs. And if one nutrient is in short supply, well, that means that a wheel could stick and the entire food web could be limited. So this is what I mean by wheels or, or gears or cog, cog wheels, um, depending on how you want to picture it. But, you know, all these nutrient cycles work together. And if you have one that's missing, it could slow down or stop altogether. Now, the sizes of these wheels do matter. Um, so potassium, phosphorus, and nitrogen are kind of big ones. And then we have these smaller wheels. We call them micronutrients, like calcium, magnesium, sulfur, iron, and manganese. Um, carbon's not included in this. In this, uh, Yeah, no, there's no carbon here. But anyways, there is nutrient limitation in soil, mostly with the use of fertilizer. If we apply too much fertilizer to the soil um, near streams and rivers, it can disrupt natural nutrient cycles and have some serious consequences. And we see that in the Gulf of Mexico. Um, where there are spots where there's no oxygen um, because of algae blooms. Okay, And I guess that kind of ties into two. Limitation in aquatic ecosystems. So runoffs, like I said, have abnormally high concentrations of nitrogen and maybe some phosphorus. And it causes algae blooms. And you guys know what algae blooms are, okay? Like it happens on Lake Traffers every year. Um, but it, does kind of, it can disrupt the function of entire ecosystem. Um, so with an algae bloom, it uses up all the oxygen in the area and uh, it kind of uses up a lot of nutrients. And so there's just not a lot of life in those areas. Okay, so that does it for chapter four. Um, and I think, you know, you're going to have a test here either tomorrow or the day after. I have to sit down and plan this. Um, so make sure you guys check out the stream as to what's going on.